So why did I completely negate the benefits of my LP Tech Shield Radiant Barrier by putting spray foam up against it? Let's find out today on Smith House. Hey guys, make sure you go check out mtcopeland.com. There's all kinds of great videos over there on how to raise your game as a tradesperson. Our goal with MT Copeland is to have the best instructors teaching the most up-to-date and technically accurate information, which will help take somebody from apprentice who knows nothing about the trades through journeyman all the way through mastery of the subject. This is spray foam. It is sprayed completely up against a radiant barrier from LP called Tech Shield. It makes the Tech Shield do nothing. There's no reason I should have spent extra money on Tech Shield. So why did I do it? Well, here was my thinking originally. I said, all right, I've got a Galvalum roof and then I'm going to put Tech Shield on it and the Galvalum roof is going to reflect a lot of the energy and then the energy is going to get uh, converted to conduction and it's going to conduct through the roofing members and then it's going to hit my radiant barrier here in the cavity and it's not going to re-emit and it's going to have to turn around and take a long trip back and re-radiate out into space and it was going to be awesome. So I did that. I upsized my rafters. These are instead of like a 2x6, these are a full 2x10 because with Owens Corning with a 2x10 cavity I can still get an R30 bat with a 1 inch air gap back behind it and that air gap is critical. Instead of this being a conditioned space, I love conditioned attics because I can keep all of my mechanicals in there, my air conditioner runs straight through conditioned space, everybody's happy uh, and then, then you just reclaim all of the space instead of it just being a big empty attic. This is actually living space, we've got bedrooms and we've got a bathroom and this is just like a family room thing. Love finished spaces. If I wasn't doing this as a finished space, this tech shield would be doing its job. There would be insulation down here underneath me and the tech shield would not radiate the energy into the attic space and then finally find its way into the cavity below raising the temperature. It's going to reject that energy, not reflect, it's just not going to re-emit it. However, when you put a material right up against another material, you're no longer radiating heat. Heat transfers in three different ways, radiation, conduction, and convection. Radiation is how the sun heat gets to the earth, right? There's nothing, there's just space, there's a void, so it has to go through radiation. And then it gets to our atmosphere and it heats up the air and the air flowing around and the water flowing around, that's convection. That's m heat movement through media movement. And then there is conduction. That's when you have a hot pan and you touch it, it's hot, ow! You touch it, it conducts into your skin, right? Those are the three ways. So by having a reflective surface on the inside, on the inside of an attic space, it reduces the material's ability to emit or to radiate the energy into the attic space. So that heat hits the, hits the steel roof, it gets turned into a conducted heat and it conducts through the roof membranes and then it can't re-radiate through the foil facing very well. So it turns around and it finds its way back out and everybody's happy. However, in this space, I was going to use the Owens Corning cathedral ceiling bat in this space that would give me that one and a half inch or one inch space back behind the insulation because I can't touch it, remember, because if I touch it, it goes to conduction. So I keep that space and then it doesn't re-radiate, but any heat that gets in between my insulation and my roof deck is going to find its way out through ridge vents and from eave vents. So the air will get heated up and it will flow and it will suck cool air in through my eave vents and it will exhaust through my ridge vent. It's a beautiful system. Vented attics are awesome. However, up here, if I was going to do that, I didn't think about this early on. This is, you know, we're all still learning, right? Um, if I was to do that, I could have done that. That solution would have absolutely worked. I put e-vents, I put roof vents, and we put the air gap, and it works. However, now I am depending on my drywall layer as my air seal layer. 
That means that my water is taken care of by my roof and my WRB on the outside, but all of my air has to be sealed from the drywall because I'm intentionally letting air come into this cavity and exhaust out. So I have a flow of air. I don't like doing that. Two reasons. One, it's hard to seal sheetrock. It just is. You have all of your plugs all around that you've got to do some detailing on. You've got all of your lights that you've got to do detailing on. You've got your HVAC vents that you've got to do detailing on. Everything is a detail. And you've got to get all that right because you don't want that air getting sucked into your living space. Especially if it's hot and humid outside and cold inside, now you've got condensation. And you've got condensation around all your HVAC vents and everything's moldy and nobody's happy. I don't like doing it. Two, even if you get all those details right, because you're a great builder and you know how to do it and you detail it and it's all perfect. What happens in 10 years when new owners come in and like, you know what I'd like to do? i like to put a light right there. They drill a hole, they hang a light. You've just popped your balloon. You had this awesome detailed drywall balloon that was keeping all the bad air out and all the good air in. They just popped it and they have no idea that they just popped it. No idea. Nobody thinks. Nobody thinks about putting in a light and thinking, well, what did I just do to the air ceiling in this home? Nobody. Guarantee you, you ask a hundred homeowners and a hundred of them would be like, I wanted a light there, right? So I don't like air sealing off the drywall. And that's what I was going to be forced to do if I kept going down the path that I was going. So then I thought, well, can I still use the insulation the, the fiberglass insulation and have the gap and just, you know, sort of leave out, leave out the ridge vents and the E vents and that whole, I still have my air gap and yeah, it'll get superheated in there, but it's, the honest answer is I don't know what would happen. I don't. Part of me can argue, well, it would be a closed system in there and you would have micro currents that would get heated up and then go up and then come back down, but because you're completely sealed, you're not going from the outside, you're not letting moist air in, so it should be fine because it's just, but I felt like I was getting too far over my skis. I felt like I was getting out from the, we know this works, to the, hey, Jordan's gonna try something. And it's never good when you're building houses for other people to be in that Jordan's gonna try something. I love trying stuff, I try stuff all the time. I try stuff on my house where I can watch it for a while and see how it's gonna work. I don't try stuff on other people's houses. And that's when I took a step back and said, you know what, I'm, I'm not comfortable with putting the ridge vents and the e-vents in, and I'm also not comfortable doing the hybrid system. I know that I can spray foam the deck straight up against the radiant barrier, and I also know that that completely negates any of the benefits of having the radiant barrier up there. I'm gonna take the lumps, I'm gonna swallow my pride, I'm gonna spend the money on the tech shield that's doing zero good, and I'm gonna spray foam it. And that's what I did. So I have got well over R30 of spray foam up here. It's like closer to R38 or something up here because I have such big rafters up here. Um, everything's air sealed with my spray foam. Actually, everything it was already air sealed with my WRB. This is LP Weather Logic on the outside, and that's where I'm getting my air sealing from, and I'm doing details up around the house. So I'm not con depending on the, the spray foam too much, but every little bit helps, right? So we're, we're very tight in this house. We haven't done a blower door on it yet, but I'm expecting sub one, sub one ACH 50. Um, but at the end of the day, the tech shield is doing zero good. And that's sort of a disappointment because I was looking forward to having like all the cool bells and whistles checked. So the moral of the story is twofold. Number one, never be too proud to say, you know, what I was thinking I was going to do might not be the best solution. Maybe I should do a proven concept even if it costs me a little bit more money. And then that leads to number two, never be afraid to spend a little bit more money doing it the right way. Like once you know like, okay, that's the right thing to do. It would have been very tempting for me to spend less on fiberglass because that's way cheaper than spray foam. And I had already spent the money on the tech shield. So this is like, this solution here is the most expensive option that there was. 
but it's the right thing to do. And the owners of this house are going to be living in here for a very long time. This house will be here long after I'm dead. And I'm not building for me, I'm building for the future. So yeah, it, I don't make as much money on this. I guarantee you, I'm gonna think a little bit more about it in the future about like, okay, am I doing this way or am I doing that way? And which way am I most comfortable with? So I don't waste money in between time trying to do a hybrid system. But I'm always gonna do the right thing to make sure that the home is best served for functionality, durability, and beauty. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something here. I hope that answers some of the questions that you'll had about like, well, I thought you were doing tech shield. Why is there spray foam up against there? Because I know that's what a lot of you were, <laughs> were thinking. Comment below any other questions that you might have on this. Comment below, do you love spray foam? Do you hate spray foam? What's your favorite type of insulation? What are your opinions on radiant barrier? And how can I show people that the science behind radiant barrier not whether it's worth the money or not, not that science. I'm just saying the science of radiant barriers and emissivity being a thing, how can I show people that very convincingly because I haven't done it well yet? Comment that below, I would love to hear your ideas. Thanks so much for watching. Go check us out at mt.copeland at Instagram, at Smith House Co. and at Jordan Smith Builds, and we'll see you next time on Smith House.